This is Dan Kedmi, a producer on the Webby Award-winning podcast, Masters of Scale. Our host, Reid Hoffman, the founder of LinkedIn, has returned this summer with season three. And throughout this season, he'll share some truly surprising tales of scale. We've also asked our summer sponsor, the MasterCard Center for Inclusive Growth, to share their own tales of scale. How do they help two billion people worldwide gain a foothold in the formal economy? They offered a series of solutions that you can hear throughout our show. Or you can listen right now. Coming up, the solution to small change. So in some countries, you know, you can buy one stick of gum. You don't buy the whole pack of gum, you buy one stick. That's Shamina Singh, president of the MasterCard Center for Inclusive Growth, the philanthropic arm of MasterCard. She has a keen interest in the world's tiniest transactions, the sales that occur not in dollars, but in cents. So when you're dealing in smaller transactions, smaller amounts, you use smaller amounts of money. It's at this level of commerce, selling just one stick of gum, where emerging economies can hit a sticking point. How do shops ensure they have the right change? Often, they don't. What we've heard from shopkeepers in Africa and in other markets is that they have to run around and try to figure out how to buy change from other people. People actually have to pay to get loose change, if that makes sense. You heard that right. Shopkeepers not only have to run out of their stores, they also pay a surcharge on loose change. So it's enormously expensive, and it's a huge time waster for a lot of shop owners all over the world. It's a particular challenge for rickshaw drivers. Rickshaws, of course, are the taxi of the developing world. Basically, it's a motorcycle with a cover on top, (laughs) with a little two-seater in the back. Usually, there is no meter on a rickshaw. It's usually a negotiation. And the negotiation breaks down if the driver doesn't have change. Shamina's colleague, Parag Mehta, has seen this coin chase play out in Mumbai among a cluster of parked rickshaws. There's all these little rickshaws in this like hodgepodge pile. It's amazing to me how anybody ever gets out of this pile because they're all like sideways and whatever. There's a hidden logic to these pileups. When drivers fall short of change, they can ask a neighbor for help but it's a chaotic negotiation. You say, how much will it be? And they'll quote you a price. You say, okay, but I only have 200 rupee note. He's like, oh, I can't break that. And he doesn't want to lose the business, right? He'll start yelling around to the other drivers, anybody got change for this. And if it's a good day, then yes, then one of the drivers might step up and say, yes, I'll break it. You look around and you say, is it really 2018? Like, is this how the world still works? Not anymore. In fact, a group of rickshaw drivers have now leapfrogged into a cashless and coinless future. Shamina says if you want to see the forefront of this movement, take a closer look at some of the rickshaws in India. You may notice a familiar black and white patch known as a QR code. For those of you who don't know what a QR code is, look on any um, box, look on anything that you purchase, and there is usually a little black and white square, and that's a way for computers to read what the product is. And so we developed a protocol and a standard in India for how QR codes could be used to transact. So we started equipping the rickshaws with unique QR codes so that people could just use their QR code from their phone. And then it basically became a payment system for them. So the rickshaw driver doesn't have to lug around coins anymore, and neither does the passenger. One scan of the phone saves everyone from a scramble for loose change. Which raises a question, when will the rest of the world's entrepreneurs catch up with those rickshaw drivers? You'll see them in South Africa. You'll see them in Kenya. You'll see them in developing markets because I think they're leapfrogging countries like the United States. And I think we get used to our own systems. Does Shamina's vision spark any ideas for you or your business? Email the center at scale at mastercard.com. That's scale at mastercard.com. Want to hear more Tales of Scale? Subscribe to Masters of Scale on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen.